We continue to preview the 2024 college football season, and our stop today is Olathe, Kansas. And it is a privilege to get to visit with the head football coach for the Mid-American Nazarene Pioneers, Coach Paul Hanson, heading into his fifth season with the program. Coach, a great season last year. I do want to start there because you all were 9-2, and two, a share of the conference championship. Uh, really, I mean, just seemed to get better as the season went on. It was a great year. Can you talk about that a little bit to get us going? Yeah, and uh, thanks, Joey, for having me. I always enjoy uh, getting on the summit here with you and talking football. And uh, thank you for everything you do for small college football. But yeah, it was it was a great season for us, and uh, really just a, a season that we kind of needed to take to take that next step uh, nationally, but also in the conference. And and our guys were up to the challenge, and they did that. And uh, it was it was a fun year. And uh, but you know, kind of you know, it's about to hit June here. And so we're kind of moving on to this next season, but we're really going to use last year to kind of springboard us into this next season and continue that success. Yeah, I know year by year you have to do that, but I still, you know, I wanted to look back just a little bit. It, it was fun to watch you all and to, to see the performance. And, and it, again, it's a program that just seems to take step by step by step in your tenure there. And though, look, can we look back at least to the spring then? How'd the spring go for you? Yeah, no, it, it was really good. And it definitely, I think it definitely helps too when you have so many guys returning. Uh, it makes spring ball a lot better too. Um, just all the reps, all the competition, it just everything's a little bit better. And and obviously, like I said, springboarding off the, the fall season, you know, a lot of our guys are they're pretty hungry uh, going into this next year. So we had a really good spring. Uh, you know, when you have a lot of guys back, you know, we actually were able to have a bigger, we had more guys this spring than we have since I've been here. So uh, it was it was a lot of fun, a lot of competition, and and really during the uh, the spring game, we actually did something I haven't done before here. We actually drafted uh, the two teams, so we had a red we had a red and a white uh, spring game, and uh, I mean even the coaches were drafted. So I kind of we drafted everybody. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it, and I just kind of during the spring game, I I kind of just walked around with a with a whistle and acted like I was doing something, but I let them kind of do it. And uh, really, our guys really enjoyed that. It was a very competitive spring game. Uh, at times, almost got too competitive. Uh, and so we had to bring everyone in a little bit and say, hey, you know, we're still on the same team. But the guys had a lot of fun with it. But really, we're the point now in our program and our culture that we're able to do this type of stuff because we're keeping kids around. And and uh, that's a testament to our coaches, the administration here, but also the the type of kids we're bringing in here. And uh, it's been been pretty cool to see the transformation from 2020 to where we're at now. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's been pretty cool to see, you know, coach, let's, let's start talking about the, the, the team itself and, and preview this, this upcoming fall season. And in light of that, you know, we've talked about culture here before with you, but, but seeing it now being brought to this point and uh, to the point you made just a, a moment ago, so many players returning and, and big time players returning as well. You have the player of the year in the heart conference in Adrian Parsons coming back through for more than 3,100 yards through for 31 touchdowns. I mean, the numbers just continue to add up and it seemed like every Sunday night on, on my program, I, I was talking about something else that Parsons had done uh, Parsons to Mitchell, which by the way, it's going to be a connection that that's in the past now, but uh, so many things that, uh, that were going on. Take, take us through your offense. Yeah. You know, I, I think every great team that you look at, they have to have a, they have to have a, a great quarterback to put them over the top. And we've been very fortunate with Adrian uh, these last four years, and he's kind of going into his senior year now and he's very determined. And, you know, this last week, actually, we saw him out here. He was thrown with a lot of our guys and he just, He's just uh, when when some kids have it, they have that it factor, and he has that. And he's he's really been a guy that's kind of put us over the top in a lot of games uh, the last last couple of years. And um, but it, with him being a leader and our captain and all that, he he's somebody that our guys look to, and he's definitely taken that role on really good. And uh, really excited for him. You know, he I think he has a chance to be like the all time leading passer here in school history um, this fall if you know if everything works out how it's supposed to with him and. Um, he, and really he kind of did that, you know, this is, this will be technically his third year as a starter, his first year, we were trying to hold him off a little bit just so he can learn the game a little bit. And he forced our hand a little bit and, uh, he had an opportunity and I think he broke that national passing record as a freshman. So he, he's done a lot of great things for us. Um, I know there's some stuff from last year that he's not happy with, uh, that you know, in his play and a couple of things that he was doing. And so he's worked really hard this off season to, to, to make himself a better quarterback all around. 
I'm just really proud of, proud of the kid. You know, when I was at a previous school, I was recruiting him out of, out of high school and he was a sophomore and um, I actually had him on official visit the previous place I was at. And then uh, when I got this job, I called him the next day. I was like, hey, you're going to Kansas. And he was kind of like looking at me weird, like Kansas. I was like, no, it's all right. It's the city. So, uh, but no, since he's been here, he's had a great career on and off the field. And, you know, he, he's married now, has has a child. And so he's he's really this last year, he's, he's done a lot. Um, both in on and off the field. So it's pretty cool to see how he has grown uh, into the man he's becoming. And, you know, he's getting his degree in criminal justice and he wants to be a police officer someday. So I'm really excited uh, to see him do that. And he'll do a great job with that too. Absolutely. Well, he has a, a lot of uh, folks coming back. I mean, you've got returnees on the line, you have some transfers coming in, but you also are able to move the ball on the ground as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, anytime you return a lot of starters, I think we have like 10 returning starters from last year. So there's a lot of experience uh, from every receiver position. I think you got a guy like EJ Rogers, who was all conference last year, Miles Himes, is another receiver. And then you saw him the first week when we were down at Langston, but you know, he was a two time all conference receiver, um, you know, and, and then at the running back position, you got Sean Cherry, who is a two year starter to your two year um, all conference player. Uh, Cam Finley uh, is another running back that's coming back. Uh, you know, he he came in with me in 2020, and so this is his COVID year. And so we still – this is the last year for that, um, so if anyone's wanting to know. But, uh, yeah, so he's kind of the old, the old guy on the team. But uh, really proud of him. He stuck it out, and he's been a great player for us, kind of a change of back uh, type player for us. And he also returns kicks and punt returns, and so he's been a really good player for us. And so – uh, anytime you have all those type of skill guys back at those skill positions um, is really important. And then last, we have several key guys last year that maybe were like a backup guy or a young guy that got to play a little bit. Now they're back behind those guys. So the depth is really good. There's not really a fall off. Um, so I feel like some of the great teams that they have really good depth. And, uh, and I feel like we have a lot of guys that have played or been in, in key situations that will help us during those key spots. And then up front, we have four returning starting offensive linemen that are back, um, which is always a key when you have a, a big unit like that. And, and we have a couple of guys, too, that have transferred in that we're really excited about that are going to push those guys to maybe get a starting position. Uh, but, uh, you know, up front, Justin Miller was an all-conference player last year as a sophomore. And Blaine Blevins, uh, he's, a, he's our center. He also long snaps and short snaps, but he was all-conference as well. So um, that that's really important when – you have the two guys on your team that touched the ball every play last year <laughs> are back. So that's really important. We're speaking now with Paul Hanson here on Midwest Sportsnet on the summit as we preview the 2024 college football season. Uh, Paul Hanson, who, by the way, the coach of the year in the conference. And I would also say on a personal note, uh, coach is the fifth time that you and I've been able to speak on the channel now in 24 months. So I'm going to say friend of the channel as well. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that moniker. I think coach of the year is probably a little more important but we'll, we'll give you that one as well. We look to the defensive side of the ball now, uh, the Pioneers coming up in 2024. Uh, your top two tacklers from last season coming back, Elias Carson, who was the freshman of the year in the conference, and also Jonathan Brown, who moved from defensive line to linebacker and, and uh, didn't seem to miss a beat. No, and uh, it's it's really it's really good to have those two guys back. Elias was a, a great person on the back half, uh, and he, he did a good job of – of filling the alley and making those tackles when we need him to. And he was tied with John actually for our, um, for our leading tacklers being back. And then, you know, a guy like John Brown, who uh, kind of came in and we were trying to figure out where we should put him. And uh, he, he really took his new role um, at linebacker uh, really serious. He got, he got after it and he's been a player that even if you look back a year ago, I was talking about, he was going to have a great year and he ended up, you know, being our leading tackler and uh, being all conference linebacker. So having those two guys back who've, who've played a lot uh, with each other and, 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 and have a lot of experience on the defense is helpful. Um, and I, I think on the back half, you got a guy, a guy like Jacob Tech, who, who's, uh, you know, he'll be a senior uh, three-year starter, someone who kind of came in with us after my first year here and kind of bought into the program, the weight room. And he had a really good off season. Uh, you got a guy like Ethan Pritchard, who um, last year was his first year playing defense since high school. And uh, we made the move because his first two years here, he was playing receiver and he kept getting hurt. So I said, we'll move you to defense. And there you go. He's a second team all conference. So uh, I've been telling him that he should play defense this whole time. But uh, no, no, he's a he's a he'll be a senior. He's a great player for us. 
Um, so on, on that side, it's been really good. Uh, at, the, at the corner position, we have a couple guys we're really excited about, uh, Kevin Ledesma, uh, Garcia. Um, and I'll tell you right now, we, we lost Anthony Sal. Obviously, he's with the Atlanta Falcons right now in their, uh, in their, in their mini camp. But uh, Kevin's someone that we're very uh, excited about. We didn't have him last year, and so uh, we he, we didn't have him. Uh, but two years ago, he played for us, and so we're really excited to have him back. He's a really good corner. Another guy named Maxwell Weber, who started uh, every game for us last year as well at corner. So having two guys have a ton of experience there is really important. A uh, guy like Deion Burton, who played a little bit as a freshman last year, has that experience. You know, Rance Hamilton, another guy who played last year a little bit in, in role position. So having a lot of guys back um, on the back half is is, is really uh, important, um, especially with some of the offenses we're going to have to go against this year. So that's really important. Um, up front, we have several guys that are back as well. Um, a guy like Marcos Flores, who's been a two-year starter, uh, Calvin Bouchard, who has been a, a three-year starter going his fourth year. He's a two-time all-conference player for us. Uh, Jay McWilliams is a, a all-conference defense alignment that we didn't have last year that he's back. Uh, Ronald Huff, another guy who uh, is a, has been one of our better defense alignment. Uh, so we uh, – Zywan White, who's a two-year starter. So I, mean, I could keep on going on with a lot of guys that have played – you know, having about nine starters back from a year ago is, is, is going to be a big factor on us. And and really, we want to get to the point now, like, I know I, I like offense, but really in the day, I want I want a really good defense. You know what I mean? So um, uh, Coach Cordova has done a great job with our defense. And and over the over the last couple of years, just seeing how we keep on growing on that side of the ball um, has been really important for us and our success of these last two seasons and um, and those coaches, Coach Benton does a great job. Coach Griffin, all those guys, they, they've done a great job with our players and really develop them. And uh, so I'm, I'm really excited to, to see our defense and where we're at this year and and, uh, and lean on them even more as we hopefully play more meaningful games late into November and December. Yeah, you keep talking about players coming back too, and, and they're you know 10 on the offensive side, nine on the defensive side, and they're players not only with experience, but they're they're good at what they do. And upperclassmen on on top of that, I mean, this really is kind of a year that that you've been pushing for for a while, and, and it should be a fun one to watch. Yeah, you know, and, and really in 2020 when I got here, I, I could have that spring I got here and then we all shut down. I mean, I could have just went and got 22 transfer players and just built the team that way, but I, I didn't. I didn't do it that way. Um, I, I I felt like we needed to build um, with young guys and and develop them but also get a transfer here and there to fill some holes. And we've kind of done that. And a lot of these guys I've mentioned, they've been here, you know, <laughs> they've been here this whole time. Uh, every one of our all-conference guys last year, except for one, were high school kids that we brought in. Um, and really the one kid that wasn't, he, he we recruited uh, out of high school and he went somewhere for a year and then came back to us. So uh, it's been pretty cool to see um, just the development. I feel like all great teams, you got uh, you got to have one good coaching um, and, and and know how to develop those young guys because if not, it's just the door is always going to be open. Those guys are not going to stay. So we've done that, and uh, it's been pretty cool to see. Coach, also, because I don't want to forget this, uh, special teams, you bring everybody back there too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Grant Pella, our punter, he's a, he'll, be a, he'll, he'll be a senior this year. He's a four-year starter. And then Trevor Hiley, uh, our other kicker, he'll be, uh, he'll be a four-year starter as well. And so it's really cool to see those guys kind of develop from their – First time coming in in 2001, and I say, hey, you're you're the guy. Let's go. Just learn it, figure it out. And so now they they have a lot of confidence. And I think Trevor, he hit one of his, uh, versus Benedictine the last game. He hit like a 40, I think it's like 47 or 48 yard field goal, his longest one he's had since he's been here. So he has that confidence. And so it's been pretty cool to see those guys develop and uh, and continue just to keep getting better every year. And um, and a lot of a lot of people don't realize this, but like a lot of times with kicking, you know. A lot of times that's your leading score, you know what I mean? So Trevor has been our leading score for the last two years, uh, you know, and aver averaging at least 60 points. Uh, and so a lot of people, they don't, they don't realize that of how important that kicking position is. But when you've, when you've done that for the last three years, that, that confidence is there. And, and uh, so it's been really, really good to see him develop. Season gets underway in week one, September 7th. You're on the road. You travel to Culver Stockton the next week is uh, another – these are all heart games, by the way. Of course, with the North and the South, you have the divisional play coming up. Uh, Peru State 
You're at home for Peru State, a tough team coming in. And then uh, you get William Woods. You get both of the new teams in the heart uh, a little bit later on. William Woods, October 5th, the first South game, and then the bye week. And then you could be in new facility uh, midway through the month of October, which Midwest Sports Saturday, that is the plan this year is to uh, to have – uh, a broadcast on site in Olathe. So we look forward to seeing the new facility. Tell us a little bit about your season. Yeah, you know, obviously we're really excited to uh, get football back on campus. And uh, I know the construction crew, they're actually, I was out there this morning, they're working really hard to uh, to make that happen. Uh, we've had a lot of rain here lately, though, so we need it needs to quit raining. But, uh, but yeah, it's we're really excited about opening up a new stadium this year. Uh, it's something that's uh, been – been needing to happen for a while and uh, the administration really really saw that and uh, it's been really cool to see them just kind of work hard to get that going and it's going to be a beautiful facility uh, it's actually going to be kind of like a bowl so you'll kind of look down into it be about five feet deep um, no track around the the football field so you'll get a really good as a fan you'll be really close to the to the field uh, so that would be really cool to, to see the summit out there for that. And uh, so that'd be pretty good. But yeah, really excited about the season. You know, we open up uh, at Culver Stockton and with how the heart now, we have 14 teams in the conference. And uh, so we didn't actually get to play Culver Stockton last year. So we haven't played them in two years. So excited to go down there and, and try to play them. They're, they, they had uh, they had a good off season and they have some really good players. So we're going to have our work cut out for us to go down there and, and compete with them and, uh, then obviously we got Peru State the next week, and I mean every year since I've been here, uh, that game has been just a back and forth type game. The coach O does a great job up there at Peru State. So really early on, we're going to have some pretty big tests, and then obviously we got Graceland the week after that. And so uh, they've been a team that's been on a rise now for a couple of years, and so uh, that's going to be a really tough game for us. And so. Early on, we're going to have to come out um, on, on fire because we have some teams that can de- that can definitely beat us. And if our guys aren't ready, it's going to be it's going to put us in a, in a, in a bad situation. So um, I think our kids are up for the task for sure. But I think we'll definitely have to start off fast. We can't wait, you know, three or four weeks to get going. I think that's a, that's a key for a lot of teams, but especially for us um, with us getting the new stadium, we've kind of had we've had a little bit of uh, things where we're having to work through because we have nowhere to practice. So, you know, like there's times where we're having to go at the local high school or, or down the road where we play at the, our games at ODAC. So we're dropping, we're piling on our cars. We're going down the road. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of had to, uh, that could keep us not being focused and nothing will change with that this fall with, uh, with practices. So we're going to have to, you know, make sure we're focused and be ready to go. Not lot, let distractions happen uh, during that time. But you know, Coach, and and, and I, I I appreciate your time. That's one of those things, though. I mean, at, at least you're you're used to it at this point in time. It's not just a surprise coming into August and you have to disrupt everything and, and change it all. They're used to it, and and I've seen there are times when the, those distractions or potential distractions become things to overcome, and the team builds around it. Yeah, I think, and I think there has something to say with that when you have a veteran team. Okay. So like when they, when they've been there, they've done that, they've gone through, uh, we've had some stuff going on the last you know year and a half that our guys had to go through with, with, with within the team. So they've been able to overcome some of those obstacles and get to this point and, and still have a good season last year, but also with the stadium, everything going on, there's a lot of distractions that goes on, but our guys have uh, steadfast, um, they have stayed focused. Uh, they work. They work hard. We have incredible kids, and I think that's why we've been able to continue to get better every year. Is because we don't let those little things distract us from what we're trying to accomplish as a team, and that helps with uh, having good leadership. Um, I have incredible leaders on our team. Kids have been through the program. It helps having really great coaches that have been here. I've not lost a lot of coaches. Knock on wood. And so uh, I think that stability uh, has helped. Um, the kids know what they're going to get every day in and out with our, with our, uh, with our team, the consistency, and that goes a long way. Um, and I I believe that's how culture is definitely built in in a program. All right. Coach Paul Hanson, mid American Nazarene pioneers coming off a nine and two season, looking to build on that. And it's a program that has steadily been on the rise in your time there, coach. Congratulations on what you've already done, but We look ahead and we'll be following you closely as always during this fifth season for you at the program. Coach Paul Hanson, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit. We always appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it.